the stigma of the tuberculosis it affected me the most i started having self doubts call it a fate call it a destiny or something like that but i was selected not the first job the first job i did was a district program officer for the tuberculosis for the same disease that almost made me drop off of my college drop that making the year lag so i was selected as a district program officer for the same disease that stopped me to live my dream so since then uh, i have started the tuberculosis advocacy in the community level and uh, i was recently a speaker in the united nations hlm also for the same thing so so like this this is my story from that pain to this strength if the problem is in the grassroots then the programs should also be in the grassroots so if the problem is in the community then the programs should also be directed towards the community okay. yes so, uh, yes bringing the laboratory services closer to the community uh, especially in the uh, very centralized uh, in the uh, countries like uh, like nepal which has very centralized system of the uh, health services can be a big game changer in context of the tuberculosis testing and the treatment as well so yes um, the new molecular test uh can aid in increasing the accessibility of the tuberculosis testing uh, we should not uh, we should not uh, underestimate the power of the youth so yes no, you can use your story to empower others that it's just a phase it's treatable it's just a disease it's treatable and you will do wonders in your life do not let tuberculosis question your ability to do anything uh, hello friends i'm shobha from india and at the outset i wish you all a very healthy and happy new year welcome to the first episode in 2024 of the ntb dialogues 90 for 90 global voices series this series presents insights from those on the for from those on the forefront of fighting tb to help accelerate progress towards the goal of ending tb by 2030 this year we will be focusing on the theme of find all tb to stop tb as early and accurate diagnosis of every person with tb is a critical entry gate to the tb care pathway as well as to break the chain of infection transmission our special guest for today is binika shrestha from nepal Vinika is not only a TB survivor but is also an activist who is championing efforts to make TB programs people centered and inclusive. Welcome Vinika. B- Thank you ma'am. And today's is a special episode where Vinika will be in conversation with me and my dear fr- with me and my dear friend Kalpana Acharya a very senior journalist from Nepal. Kalpana is editor in chief of Health TV Online Nepal and is former president of Nepal Health Journalists Forum. She is also on the board of Global AMR Media Alliance that is Anti Microbial Resistance Media Alliance and Asia Pacific Media Alliance for Health and Development. Welcome Kalpana. I'm so happy you are, you are here on the show with us. Uh Okay in the start Vinika can you please share your journey from pain to strength as you call it in your fight against tuberculosis yeah sure ma'am so hello everyone my name is Vinika Shrestha and i'm from Nepal uh it is the let, let me take you to the roller coaster ride right, that i have suffered and excelled from so i was 18 i was uh, i had uh, recently at that time i had recently uh, got into a bachelor's college for the bachelor's degree and uh, it was quite exciting new place new people and uh, everything new so the excitement it it took all like about a month to change the excitement to the suffering where at uh, the symptoms of the tuberculosis started so there were uh, symptoms uh, of the tuberculosis uh, we 
uh, as we know that the tuberculosis is very social disease and it is very stigmatized in countries like Nepal. So we were not uh, convinced, we were uh, like having all the symptoms of the tuberculosis also. We were just, uh, we were just hoping that it is not the tuberculosis, it's not the tuberculosis, but uh, sadly I got diagnosed with the tuberculosis. So the pain starts from this part. So uh, I got diagnosed in uh, private institutions. Then I started my treatment. And uh, during my treatment, uh, after a week of the, uh, after my treatment started, I started showing uh, side effects of uh, various diseases. So I had I started to have uh, face swelling and uh, like face swelling to this extent, like. Um, my face looked like a water-filled balloon and uh, extreme joint pain in every every joints of my body. Uh, it was very hard for me to uh, get my mobility back uh, for like, it, it took like five minutes to get my mobility back after I wake up in the morning. So it was very hard for me being far away from my home, far away from my parents and all on my own and having to deal with the tuberculosis, its treatment, its side effect, and everything. And uh, for one month, uh, for the uh, for the initial one month, I I could not go to college, so my studies was also hampered. So the main uh, these all were just the physical things, but the uh, mental problems started when that the fear of uh, people getting to know about my tuberculosis, me getting diagnosed with the tuberculosis was a very evident in my parents' suggestion of, uh, suggestions to me and not to share about the exact cause of the health problems, not seeing tuberculosis, but just seeing chest infections and everything. So the stigma of the tuberculosis, it affected me the most. I started having self-doubts, I, I kept it a secret for quite some time with my friends also. I just labeled it with chest infections. So uh, it was very hard for me to deal with everything and not uh, being able to share these things as I was living in the hostel. So the first initial month when I was in the, uh, when I was here in my hometown, it was quite bearable. Due to my, because of my support and because of the support of my parents, but uh, afterwards I started my my parents. They also suggested me suggested me to drop off of the college because I was very unwell. The side side effects were so severe that I could not walk for one minute in the street places like uh, just leave the staircase using the staircases and all. It would take quite a long time for me to. Uh, work for the very short duration also so still I persisted like I was not that it was very hard for me to give up the college that I have worked for so hard for so then yes slowly the side I I coped up with the side effects the mental stigma it remained for quite a long time that's a different story but uh, the physical side effects of the treatments and the six months long treatment was quite a, a very big problem for me at that time so and after after my bachelor's everything everything i i was at tuberculosis negative after the six months of the treatment and after my bachelor's degree uh, let's go call it a fate, call it a destiny or something like that. But I was selected, the first job, the first job I did was a district program officer for the tuberculosis, for the same disease that almost made me drop off of my college, drop that making the year lag. So I was selected as a district program officer for the same disease that stopped me to live my dream. So since then, uh, I have started the tuberculosis advocacy in the community level and uh, I was recently a speaker in the United Nations HLM also for the same thing. So, so like this, this is my story from that pain to this strength. Okay, Th thank you for sharing that and as you said that basically what was a crack in your life, the light came through that crack, that is what I see. 
yes, <laughs> and and uh, you started working for something for which you had conquered. Uh, Benika, was there? Uh, uh, how were how were you diagnosed? I'm just curious to know. And was there uh, any problem in diagnosis, or was there a late diagnosis, or or about diagnosis? How uh, uh, how were you diagnosed? I I was in my hometown here. No, we here in here in my hometown, they do not have the specialized diagnostics and the treatment facilities. Mm -hmm. They have the treatment facilities, but they don't have the specialized uh, tuberculosis diagnosis facilities. So, uh, we usually everyone everyone in Nepal, uh, they uh, like uh, the healthcare is very centralized. We uh, I went to the capital city of my country, and uh, I was it was I cannot say it was a late diagnosis because because my parents were very concerned about my health and they wanted to take me to the specialized hospitals very fast. And uh, uh, during the diagnosis, uh, I didn't face any problems. It was a smooth diagnosis, but the problem I, that I faced was during the treatment period due to the side effects of the drugs. Okay, but what tool was used? What was the diagnostic test which they used? Uh, 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 I had an X-ray and then I did a Montox test. Mm -hmm. And after all this test, um, the doctor, like it was, I was tuberculosis positive. Okay. Uh, so uh, uh, that is great because, uh, uh, but now from your experience, because we, ha we have data and I think Kalpana would be talking later of that, that uh, very few people get diagnosis upfront and are diagnosed early and accurately. So from your experience as a TB survivor and more so as a TB advocate, and you are working in that field, uh, have you come across people and what has been the impact due to late diagnosis of TB on a person? Is it important to have upfront, early and accurate TB diagnosis? From your experience, what do you have to say to that? Thank you for the question, ma'am. Uh, yes, uh, the late diagnosis of the tuberculosis have can have significant effects in the person's health and overall quality of life. Not I, I can't say just in his or her health, but overall health of the family and the community. So yes, uh, the number one problem uh, during the late late diagnosis can be uh, due to the disease progression. If the diagnosis is late, if the diagnosis is done late, then uh, it can the person can have severe more severe symptoms the more of his health can be affected the bacteria can spread and uh, there will be the uh, there will be the chances that uh, he or she may transmit the bacteria tuberculosis uh, tuberculosis bacteria to other people also so the risk in the family and the community is still there and the increase of the severity of the symptoms the symptoms are like cough fatigue these kind of the symptoms, if diagnosed in the earlier days, can be coped up easily. And much of the health is not also affected. The person's health is also not affected. But if he or she gets diagnosed late, the symptoms aggravates. The symptom can specifically impact in the person's uh, like uh, quality of life. And uh, it, can may, it may affect in the ability for uh, the ability of that person to work in the future also. So it's very important for the upfront and first diagnosis. And another thing is uh, tuberculosis. Yes, it's treatable, but still fatal in very in many cases. So uh, there can be the chance of mortality, the death of the patients also, which affects everyone connected to him. And you're so true because tuberculosis is preventable as well as curable. And still we have so many people getting infected with the disease every year and as you mentioned so many people dying of it which, which yeah. is really sad and it is unacceptable uh, you spoke about uh, mental stigma uh, benika uh, which you faced now uh, uh, when did you come out openly with your uh, status and uh, not just chest infection or when did you say it that you, you had conquered tb when was that after, after, you got, after you got cured, after you got after you got yes yes and yes. after that regarding stigma does you were young and you were a woman did that increase the stigma and what is the situation now is there still stigma because uh, 
So many years have passed since you won that fight. What do you see in society? And does being a young person and a woman, does it exacerbate that stigma? So, yes, being a young person and a woman, it can add the additional challenges in coping up with the tuberculosis in terms of this stigma associated with the tuberculosis. So, yes, uh, uh, first of all, talking about general uh, females who are the survivor or are still fighting the tuberculosis, gender-related stigma is still there. There, if a female, a young female, gets diagnosed with a tuberculosis, the woman, especially in her reproductive years, um, she can have problems, like it can have impact on her marriages and relationships also. It can raise the question marks if she can, uh, like, have babies, if she can still, if she still transmits the disease to others, like her husband or in her families and yes and the one important thing that I, I want to say that uh, I was fortunate enough I didn't have to face this stigma uh, of uh, like uh, stigma affecting the access to the healthcare. Tuberculosis especially uh, we have also we all have known that tuberculosis is mostly prevalent in the um, impoverished uh, poor communities so they cannot uh, they, they cannot spend more of their money uh, in disease or anything. So in case their daughter gets the tuberculosis and comparing if the sons get, if the son get the tuberculosis, uh, they would choose their son for the treatment and the diagnosis rather than the females. And yes, it can have a, a lifelong question mark uh, in the woman's like ability to do anything like if she had or she have or had tuberculosis okay that's great and it is what you pointed out that uh, difference between a son and a, a daughter getting tuberculosis and i have also seen Benika that when if there is a person with tb in the family it is mostly the girl or the woman who is the caregiver and yes. I have come across many cases. I have met girls who contracted tuberculosis because they were tending to or caring for a person with TB. So you are very right. So the dimensions, the gender dimensions, as in other health issues, they are very, very prominent here. Okay, so now I hand over the mic to my dear friend Kalpana Acharya, Editor-in-Chief of Health TV Online to please continue this conversation with Benika. Over to you, Kalpana. Today, uh, Yeah, we have 70,000 uh, TB cases, uh, you know that, uh, and only 37,000 patients are under treatment. Remaining 33,000 TB cases are not reported still. Uh, so how can Nepal improve its notifications and outreach reports? And how can Nepal reach the unreached? Uh, what do you say about this, Benika? Okay, uh, uh, this is a quite a big problem uh, in context of Nepal. So the first point I was I want to put forward is the public-private partnerships. Yeah. So the maximum of the cases uh, which go unnotified in the uh, common system, they go to the private sectors. So engaging the private practitioners and the clinic can help in uh, the coverage of the tuberculosis diagnosis, treatment, reporting, uh, increase the, it can increase the case notification rates, and especially in the areas where the public facility, where the people uh, favors the public, uh, private facilities more than the public facilities. The next one is the point that I, I, I'm putting forward is uh, community engagement and awareness. I would like to strongly put this point forward because the pro the problem is if the problem is in the grassroots, then the programs should also be in the grassroots. So if the problem is in the community, then the programs should also be directed towards the community. So we should uh, like conducting the extensive campaigns in the community uh, to increase the tuberculosis awareness education to the uh, education to the people about the symptoms and the importance of the early diagnosis where the tuberculosis can be diagnosed what is the treatment plan and the people can properly get treated after the full course of the treatment can help uh, can help in uh, help to 
reach the unreached population. And uh, the next thing is utilizing the, we are in the very uh, digital world. So I would like to urge people, uh, all the stakeholders of the tuberculosis to um, use the digital uh, technology like mobile, uh, mobile health clinics uh, and uh, uh, using the mobile uh, SMS and the telemedicine kind of the digital technologies in reaching the hard to reach population. We know that uh, Nepal has a very many places with, uh, which is very geographically challenged to reach their hard to reach places. So utilizing the mobile health clinic to bring the tuberculosis screening and the treatment towards the community uh, then the people coming towards the uh, cities and the specialized hospital can add uh, this uh, reaching the unreached population theme. And another is uh, we have to use uh, the move. Everyone has mobile in their hand nowadays. So if we can uh, use the SMS apps, like symptom tracking through various apps, uh, telemedicine for the repo remote consultation and the treatment and the diagnosis can, and uh, uh, some new apps, like uh, some new uh, ideas, like uh, SMS reminders for the people taking the medication, it can aid in the treatment procedures also and in reaching the unreached population also. And uh, yes, uh, and, uh, Instead of just uh, uh, launching new programs for tuberculosis every time, we can uh, we can uh, uh, launch the program of the tuberculosis in the already existing health programs also, like uh, a tuberculosis treatment, uh, tuberculosis screening and diagnosis can be added in the maternal and child health uh, care services, which is already being run in Nepal. So, like this, uh, we can help to reach the unreached. Uh, yeah, yeah, Binika, you said uh, uh, public-private partnership is very crucial uh, to combat yes. the uh, TV and minimize the TV presence. Yes, well said. And I have a uh, next question. If I'm not audible, uh, I'll send you a question and then... You are very audible, okay. Kalpana. Right now, you yeah. are very oh, oh, audible. Now, now I'm audible. Okay, that's good. Yeah, very audible. Yes, yes. Even though... Even though I, I have sent a um, uh, second uh, question, um, uh, Binika, you know, uh, Nepal is still uh, doing microscopy uh, testing. The most of the um, uh, villages and uh, local government are doing microscopy testing. Um, um, but WHO recommended molecular test like uh, TRUNAT. So uh, what do you say uh, about this and what is your experience um, uh, when you are doing the testing? Okay, yes, uh, yes, bringing the laboratory services closer to the community, uh, especially in the uh, very centralized uh, in the uh, countries like uh, like Nepal, which has very centralized system of the uh, health services can be a big game changer in context of the tuberculosis testing and the treatment as well. So yes, um, the new molecular test uh, can aid in increasing the accessibility of the tuberculosis testing and uh, it can uh, it can also not only just the um, tuber uh, not not only just uh, um, uh, finding out if the person is positive or negative uh, there can be uh, various there are various molecular tests available like gene expert in nepal also uh, which can help to find out if the person has the drug sensitivity and sensitivity towards the drugs or not so yes uh, it can help have uh, it can have a great impact in the early detection and prompt treatment of the tuberculosis it can have it can uh, um, help in the increased accessibilities and uh, it can reduce the loss to follow-up also like um, uh, testing services available in the doorstep can also uh, can also help to reduce the loss to follow-ups also and uh, Yes, uh, like it is more beneficial uh, for uh, like our countries because we yeah. have uh, geographically complications. Yes. And when we do the molecular test operated by the battery, it is portable. Yeah. And it, uh, it doesn't need any uh, type of electricity or yes. anything else. Yeah. Do you think so? Yeah. 
yes mm -hmm. uh, like bringing the testing uh, facilities to what the community will be community, uh, very yeah. beneficial for the people yeah and it can also it can also stop uh, it can also re help to reduce the additional traveling cost of the patient uh, yes. from uh, coming to and fro to the uh, hospital and uh, institutions also so yes Mm -hmm. I, I just want to know uh, what is your understanding about the uh, advocacy and the awareness level of people who are actually uh, survivors uh, like you? You are the fighter, not survivor. I, I say fighter. Uh, so um, what is your understanding? Um, is there a still stigma uh, and they don't want to share their experience and uh, their views? Do you think so? We need to uh, expand our programs, advocacy and awareness program. Yes, uh, I I was a student of a bachelor's in public health at that time when I was diagnosed with tuberculosis. I was a student of a public health, but still I was very very scared of the societal stigma stigma that can that my friends would be uh, friends would go far away from me. They would stigmatize me and everything. It took me quite a long period of time being a public health student, studying about the same disease in the classroom, giving presentations on how the stigma can be tackled and everything. I had stigma for quite a long period of the time. So yes people still have stigma and uh, not only the societal stigma, talking about the survivors, the self-stigma is also a big challenge to, to be tackled. And uh, uh, from the background that I, I am, I am a public health student. I am quite aware about the tuberculosis, but not everyone, like in context of Nepal, many people, they, they have been treated from the tuberculosis but they are not still aware of the tuberculosis somehow uh, just the diagnosis and the treatment is just not enough during mm -hmm. for the tuberculosis the counseling the education the awareness of the tuberculosis must be a very strong agent yeah yeah, very good. Yes, well said. And uh, what do you think? Um, is there any uh, role of media? Do you think uh, there is a role of media to uh, create awareness about the TB um, cases and about the treatment and awareness part? Yes, media is a backbone for the country, one of the strongest pillar of the country. So yes, media can do millions of miracles in every kind of disease, especially a stigmatized disease like tuberculosis. So yes, uh, like I, I hope that I will be uh, able to empower one tuberculosis survivor to put forward the story by looking at this uh, interview. So yes, media can do wonders. Not only this, media can help in uh, like you, you are running a health show. So yes, um, including the tuberculosis related topics, it's uh, various aspects of the tuberculosis, how people are affected by the tuberculosis, it's prevention to every treatment. If you are able to share it with the people and uh, like the craze of social medias and medias in today's world can do wonders for the tuberculosis. Well, well, uh, Vinika, um, Sabaji, uh, do you have uh, more questions? Yeah, over yes, to you. I, uh, uh, not a question, some reflection also. Uh, Kalpana talked about media engagement. Now, mm -hmm. I'm asking Vinika about youth engagement and what can the youth do to help fight TB? And uh, as Kalpana mentioned earlier, and Vinika, as you know, very often we talk of so many million people missing TB cases. People, miss, people with TB are missing. I don't think people with TB are missing. We are failing in finding them. Yes. And uh, as has been mentioned earlier, that unless we take the test and the, have a point of care test, unless we take it to the doorstep of the people, expecting people to travel, say, to Kathmandu or to centralized places, even to get a molecular test, is not everybody's cup of tea. Many of them would not be able to do that. And um, uh, Kalpana mentioned the name of TrueNAT, and I'm sure, Vinika, you must have heard of it, because that is the only point-of-care molecular test 
that has been approved by the WHO. And uh, Kalpana told us that uh, it's battery operated. Uh, it can survive uh, a huge range of temperature. So basically, it can be taken to the uh, PHC level or to the village level. Uh, along with, you were talking of uh, digitalization and we have digital portable x-rays which can be taken there. So what, what do you have to say to that? Taking lab to the people instead of expecting everyone to come. We need to, I think, step up our efforts to find the people. They are very much there. So what is the role of youth and how can the youth help in that? Media will okay. do its bit and the youth, you, you are one of the forefront leaders there, Benita. So uh, the youth, youths are very crucial in this um, movement against the tuberculosis because they have the new ideas, new innovative ideas. They are well, uh, they know well about the digital and the nowadays technologies, new technologies. So if youths are involved, then a next next generation, next generation of next generation for the tuberculosis would be very beneficial because uh, because youths they are more energetic they have more ideas and they can utilize these technologies for the tuberculosis be it for awareness be it for awareness about the treatments be it about the uh, uh, for the uh, awareness about the prevention and uh, like breaking the taboos of the tuberculosis uh, using the digital technologies and also youths are the future they will they will go they will study they will have job in every aspect if the tuber, if the youths are involved in the tuberculosis then every aspect like the collaboration the problems in the collaboration it can be tackled and, and uh, youth groups can really do wonder in the tuberculosis uh, there are various youth uh, youth groups in Nepal also, they're working for the tuberculosis day and night. They are um, launching new and new programs. They are doing advocacy in the comment level also being just so uh, we should not, uh, we should not uh, underestimate the power of the youth. So yes. No, not at all. <laughs> power of the youth is going to guide us and also to create demand, to demand from governments and to demand from institutions that what is available, the best scientific tools that are very much available are brought there for the good of the public for whom they were intended. And in a way, reduce that health inequity, that those tools should not be there in the big hospitals or the central laboratories, but they should be there. And I think that demand should yeah. come from the community and the youth yeah. can play a great role there. So we are very energized talking to you, Vinika, one of our <laughs> youth leaders today. So, uh, thank, uh, uh, Kalpana, anything else from your side? Yeah, uh, um, Binika, um, where are you from? I'm, uh, I'm from asking Hitouda. personal question. <laughs> <laughs> Tara? I'm from Hitouda. 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 I okay, okay. My hometown is Hitouda. Okay, now, nowadays you are in Hitouda? Yes. Okay, working there? Uh, I'm doing my internship. Okay. Okay, that's great. So, uh, Binika, what do you want to say um, uh, to the youths like you who are uh, still in stigma, still uh, they um, are not um, coming from uh, the um, this stigma? So, what is your uh, key message uh, to those people who are actually survivors, but they still don't um, want to come out so yeah just wrapping up this interview and especially in terms of the uh, speaking on the behalf of the various uh, tuberculosis survivor especially in the Nepal uh, it took me quite a long period of the time uh, being a student of the public health also so yes you can take a considerable amount of the time but you should not, uh, no one, no tuberculosis survivor should ever feel self-stigmatized about this. Like you should not question about your ability to do anything like uh, 
the tuberculosis survivor are very uh, they are very scared of uh, they are scared of other people knowing about their disease but mm-hmm. the mental anguish that they go through is also a big thing so you have to you should not question yourself question your ability just because you acquired tuberculosis which can be treated and uh, if take a considerable amount of the time but once you bounce back to the life once you bounce back you have to start awareness of the tuberculosis especially in those communities where it's lacking so you can uh, you can do it in your own home also familiarizing like uh, familiarizing your families your relatives and your community member to uh, regarding the tuberculosis you can use your story to empower others that it's just a phase it's treatable it's just a disease it's treatable and you will do wonders in your life do not let tuberculosis question your ability to do anything and uh, and just adding few points like you can just use any media any any medium to just open up towards the people about your story you can be a support system to some other tuberculosis survivors or who are still fighting the tuberculosis you can help them you can help them in regards to the stigma and overall treatment procedure because you have been there you have the first hand experience of the tuberculosis not uh, le- yes you can you can do the advocacy in the individual level in any kind of the pro- in any program that you go through you can educate or aware your friend circle so that they can be the medium of the change to some other people also so yes let's not question yourself if you uh, just because you have a mere disease tuberculosis Avinika, I'm just adding one more question. Is it uh, possible to end TB uh, by 2030 in Nepal, do you think? If not, uh, what is your suggestion to government and, um, as you said, public-private uh, partnership? Yes. Uh, it, like ending, to, ending tuberculosis is quite a big, like ending tuberculosis would be a big achievement. but there are various constraints in the road so uh, nepal is improving yes nepal is improving the uh, case notification rates and everything it have been improved from the past years but there are many problems and the achievement is not that much so that the sdgs targets are are will be going to meet it won't meet if the same we are tackling the same problem every time so yes i would like i would like to urge the government to include the people who have survived from the tuberculosis who had the who has the first hand experience of the tuberculosis because they know where the where the problem is because of their like the felt need and the real need are the different thing though so the felt need that the government is thinking can be different from the real need of the people like real need of the people living in the far remote areas of nepal it can be different so uh, including their opinions their voice in designing the program in launching the program or integrating various tuberculosis program it can be beneficial another thing is yes public private partnership is very much lacking in country like nepal because yes there are many people while i worked also uh, i worked for the public private partnership people usually avoid people especially in the urban area they usually avoid going to the uh, government hospitals uh, government hospitals because of the because it take too much of the time because of the uh, to, very uh, very long lines and everything and uh, people having a people like being a, li- a little if the people are a little bit of well off they choose the private uh, institution of course so the collaboration of the private institution with the public institution can help uh for the better treatment of the tuberculosis and especially especially the low level of the especially the lower level of the healthcare services like a small pharmacy 
like if the person with a uh, few tuberculosis uh, symptoms uh, can, goes to the um, pharmacy in uh, searching about searching for the cough medication or something the pharmacy people they can advise or counsel the person towards the like uh, you have to test the tuberculosis or for the diagnosis and proper treatment of the tuberculosis in the public in the in the government institution where the proper free services are available uh, so now uh, it can help in the people in it can help in the in prompt diagnosis of the tuberculosis also and it helps to reduce the treatment expenditure also because it's free in the government institution and it will not be free in the private institution so yes private um, uh, public private partnership is very crucial for this and another thing is um the point that, that i have already um, I have already mentioned uh, this um, integrating the tuberculosis services in the programs which are already being run by government. So changing a little change in the modality can help in the tuberculosis screening in the various level of the populations and the community. And uh, yes, uh, again, uh, youth participation. So you can like youth, uh, government can include the voices of the youth the youth clubs and all the um, all the um, works that the youths are doing, they can uh, include their voices, their efforts, and their new ideas in their programs, in the government's programs, which can help to elaborate the effort uh, to end the tuberculosis. Yes, it's over to you, Sobaji. Thank you, thank you, Binika. Thank you for sharing your information. Yes. Thank you. So so th thank you very much, Vinika, for sharing all this information, as Kalpana said, and the, your valuable insights with Kalpana and with me. Because ending TB is not only a public health and human rights imperative, it is also vital to advance progress towards many other goals and targets uh, which are enshrined in the UN Sustainable Development Goals. So goodbye for now, and stay healthy, and stay youthful and energized. Till we meet again. Namaste. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, everyone. You. Thank you very much.